our Father is glorified. Jesus is lifted high. He is the faithful God that remains faithful even in the midst of our unfaithfulness. Father, we worship you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor, Lord. We are grateful to call you our Father. We are grateful that we know you and you call us your own. We are glad that we have you, Lord. You are our highest possession, Jesus. We worship you. None else matter, Lord. No one else matters, Lord. Just speak some sweet words into the ears of your Father. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you love him. He's the lover of our souls. He's the King eternal. From generation to generation, he remains God. Just lift up your voices and worship in this house. Lord, we love you, Lord. We exalt your name, Lord. There is no like you. No one else can touch our hearts like you do. We have said through all eternity, Lord, and found there is in heaven and the elders the 24 elders they constantly bow before Jesus before God and they shout what? Hosanna in the highest we are going to be singing hallelujah to our Jesus because it's written in his word that in good and in bad times we must constantly give glory to God right? so if you are ready like we are ready let's give our singer hallelujah to Jesus body from right to left come on to the right to the left to the right to the left hallelujah hallelujah amen hallelujah amen hallelujah amen sing 
part of this worship service on his behalf it will take so much of our time but we truly truly appreciate every one of you that have come his family wherever they are watching right now also appreciate us and like the APICP admin has said will keep welcoming us we just also want to recognize the presence of uh, pastor and pastor mrs testimony at Folabi. he is the pastor in charge of the Living Faith Church, Eket District. He is here to also celebrate with us. Uh, these are friends of Pastor Daria Moore, General Overseers of Missions in Eket. We welcome you. When we get your name, we'll also do well to introduce you. It's time for testimonies. We can take everybody. I'm sure if you ask people who may want to say one or two things about Pastor Dari, a lot of persons will raise their hands just have a few persons that will take up testimonies now but before we call them we've been instructed to read this tribute uh, from his younger brother pastor Leki Adeboye 
and it's in the program. You can join me. I'll just quickly read it. Uh, Pastor Leke has asked that this be read here. PD, as he calls him, it's been extremely difficult coming to terms with your demise. For days, I wished it would all be a dream, but it wouldn't. My heart is broken, scars into no small measure, and if I were without faith, I might despair. I have had people say all sorts to console me, including stay strong, and I wonder, could that even be a thing? If only they understood my pain, if only they knew a part of me just died, if only they had a good grasp of all that you meant to me. You were my brother, my big brother, in every sense of the word. And even though there were times we didn't quite agree, I loved you to bites. I loved you like no other, regardless. You taught me to spread my wings, to soar high, to blaze the trails. You taught up, you took up the cogles for me and stuck with me in awkward moments to serve with brilliance and class. Oh, you were remarkably full of wisdom, solid on logic, and gifted with incredible sense of humor. Who would have thought that I would come to miss all of those so soon? Things were just about getting exciting, buddy. But alas, you are gone. And though it's only been a few days, I miss you so very much already. I know you would ha have me celebrate your life cherish the memories we have made and shared, choose to turn my thoughts towards heaven, where you are currently parting with angels. These I shall do. Sunreo Egbomi, interpretations, sleep on my elder brother. The Lord would console and strengthen every one of us in the name of Jesus. Like I said, we're taking a few persons who will just say testimonies. No particular order will have Brother Udwak. Brother Udwak will be speaking on behalf of the... Okay. I've also been told to, if I call Brother Udwak, to read the wife's tributes. To read the wife's tributes. <sighs> I write this with a heavy heart because I never knew it would be this soon. I can't believe I have to talk about you in past tense. I thank God for the wonderful life you lived. You were amazing inside and out. Yes, we had our differences and we fought. This time you fought the good fight of faith and I'm sure you got the crown. You have run your race and have finished well. You left us with the button and we will continue the race from here. It's truly not a matter of how long, but how well. Although your time on earth was short, your impact is felt worldwide, especially amongst the youths. I do not mourn because I celebrate, I do not mourn, but I celebrate you because you are heaven's gain. In your last messages, you told us if you leave this world now, you are fulfilled and know you have done what the Lord sent you to do. Well done, God's general. I salute you. You told the children, go with mommy. She will take care of you better than I can. And called me and said, baby, please give them whatever they want. We kissed and you said your byes. You said you wanted to rest and asked not to be disturbed because you knew Jesus wanted you by his side. Who am I to question God? You have always said, when I don't have answers, I should ask the Holy Spirit for clarifications. I did. He assured me you were with the Lord. I saw you lifted into glory. The girls and I miss you so much already. But heaven needs you more. My number one customer. You would buy things you don't need. You would ask, baby, when is the new stock arriving? Don't sell to anyone. I am buying all. I would ask what you need so many biscuits and teas for. Your response, I just want you to write sold out on every item on your Instagram page. 
You were a man with an excellent spirit. Your attention to details was top notch. You aimed for excellence in everything you did and taught us to follow suit. Even your dressing was with swag and you made sure the girls and I always looked good too. You would ask a million times if the children and I were okay and would ask until you were absolutely sure we were fine. Every answer, whether yes or no, must be accompanied by a detailed explanation. It was always such a joy to see you play computer game with the girls. You danced with us unashamed and would sing lullabies to them. You had a distinct way of waking us up in the morning by clapping your hands. I will continue this from now. You greeted everyone with a big hug and a smile. I know you are watching over us now. Your heavenly CCTV has even more coverage. You always wanted us to celebrate every milestone of the girls in a grand way, be it preschool, graduation, birthdays, etc. We were already planning Ara's graduation in July and all the girls' birthdays in December. We still spoke about these events last week. Nothing is going to change, darling. We will continue to celebrate their wins. We will continue to celebrate their wins, knowing you will also be there in spirit. Thank you for the day we met 17 years ago and for the 12 years of marriage. Thank you for the three wonderful girls we have, your angels, as you fondly called them. Thank you for your family who are now mine. Without you, I wouldn't have known them. Thank you for the life lessons. Thank you for all the wonderful moments we created and shared together. Thank you for all the joys and laughters. Thank you for your service to the kingdom of God. Thank you for allowing God to use you globally. You are sorely missed, my darling. I love you, baby. Sleep till we meet on the resurrection morning. Your wife, Timi Ulua. To take the first testimony will be Brother Udwak. Brother Udwak is a member of the City of David, where we are right now, a church the last church Pastor Dari pastored um, before his passing. And immediately after Brother Udwak, we'll have Pastor Mulero. Pastor Mulero is from Port Harcourt at the creation of Youth Province 5. Pastor Dari covered the south, south, southeast before Youth Province 10 was created. So Pastor Mulero is going to speak on behalf of those who are now going to be with uh, Youth Province 10. Pastor Ime Ufot will speak on behalf of pastors in Youth Province 5. And we'll have Pastor Testimony and Folabi who is um, the pastor in charge of the Living Faith Church, Eke District, speak on the relationship they had with Pastor Dari um, in their ministry here in Eket. So just in the order I have called and in less than two minutes. Praise the Lord. Sorry, sir. We also have uh, Pastor Mrs. Adebulu speak on behalf of the women. Pastor Dari always loved the balance. Each time I, I did program arrangement with him and he noticed they were just men, men, men. He would refer me back and say, go and arrange it properly. We should have, as we have men here, we should equally have women. So she's going to speak on behalf of the women. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. A testimony to the life and times of Pastor Dari Adeboye during his sojourn, both as a provincial pastor of Youth Province 5 and the pastor over the city of David. I want to share three snapshots of the impact Pastor D, as he was affectionately called, over our lives in the city of David. First testimony I want to share is him inheriting a vision that was not his own. Pastor Dari came to the city of David, which now became a province in 2018. And just about that time, we were beginning the project, the City of David Academy, just to your right-hand side. I think up until then, we had never met a pastor who was self-sufficient. That means he was a man of means. And so we had this humongous project. We did not have the funds with which to complete it. It's on record for most of us. I don't think we've ever seen anyone who reached deep into his pocket to fund that project the way we saw it. We're used to seeing pastors demanding from their congregations to make things happen. But Pastor D was exceptional. 
There are countless lives in the city of David and beyond that were touched by his personal generosity. And that is a testimony to the love that was in his heart to touch and bless people. Number two, his willingness to reach out and share, and, and to reach out and clear out. We're just reading um, Mami Temilulua's uh, condolence, and you can see her talking about his desire to explain in detail. I remember, because I oversee the teens here in the church, I remember him trying to explain, you know, my teens had asked the question about the brand you typically see on his shirts and something you see on the suits of some of his associates. And they had a question, they had a query about what appeared to look like flashiness on his part. Pastor Dari was a man who was misunderstood in very many ways. And just to tell you the extent of his humility, he was someone I was, able, I was always able to reach out to on WhatsApp and chat about issues. And I chatted him and I said, your teens are confused. You look like a guy, man. Come and explain yourself. You know, and then he came. And he took a whole, probably about an hour or so, explaining the origins of that logo and what it meant to him. We left that service understanding that what he was trying to say to every one of us is that you need to be unique. As is a testimony to Pastor Dari. Praise the Lord. I have one more to share. His willingness to embrace and forgive. This is personal. Somewhere in the middle, sometime in 2019, I got disaffected with the state of the church shortly after he came. I didn't understand then that if you saw things not going well, you needed to be a part of what it takes to fix it. I stepped away from the workforce. I wrote to him and I said I was stepping away from the workforce because I didn't like the way things were going. One of my greatest joys as I stand before you today is that several months just before he passed, I had walked back to his office and said, this is why I left, but I want to be a part of what you are doing here. I want us to work together to fix this. Every issue that I raised with him, he tried to clear. That's the kind of man Pastor Dari was. I just want to challenge every one of us. Let us live a life that we invest in people. Let us live a life of impact. And if there are misconceptions, do the best you can to explain it. But ultimately, God knows your heart. I am pretty sure Pastor Dari's heart was in the right place. And I pray for every one of us here that as we reflect on his life, we will live well. And at the end of the day, be received to glory. Praise the Lord.